Kobe Bryant, Bryant, as everybody knows, has uh, suffered a tragic helicopter crash, actually in our neck of the woods, and um, it was so it was so weird that like I don't know if people outside LA I know he's like world famous, but in LA where I grew up and still live to this day. Kobe Bryant was like, uh, I mean, he was like a god here. He played for the Lakers for 20 years, the best years the Lakers ever had. Him and Shaq, I, they were just winning championships. It was like this, it was such an exciting time to be in L.A. Everybody was watching the Lakers. But Kobe, you know, it's so rare that the player plays in a city his whole career. 20 years he played in L.A. He was a Laker all the way. So for me... And, and everybody here in L.A., they're used to seeing his name, seeing him on the TV. My dad's a hardcore Laker fan, so he was always he was always on our TV at home. And at 41 years old. But so, actually what's crazy is that when the news broke, um, I was hearing that his family wasn't on there. But then when you yeah. find out his 13-year-old daughter was on there with him. Fuck, I can't imagine losing your child in that way. Um, so, you know, everybody's talking about Kobe Bryant, so I will, uh, instead of eulogizing him in the normal fashion that you guys have probably all seen, I prepared some clips that we can watch, actually, in memorial, um, Kobe Bryant insane shots. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, people were um, the night that the news or the morning the news broke. People went out to Staples Center, which is where the Lakers play, and uh, they were just having a memorial service for him. Which is it was so weird because the Grammys happened at the Staples Center the same night, so it was a strange, it was a strange vibe down there. I don't know if I can. I'm just going to show you this one clip because I'm afraid this will just go on for too long here with the best insane shots. But this is one of the most epic Kobe Bryant moments in NBA history. He was having this long drawn out beef with this player, Matt Barnes, okay? And uh, here, I'll just let you get an idea. It was getting really dirty between them. Lots of shoulders and elbows. He was getting, you see them? These are the two guys. They were like this the whole game, just bumping chest. He was getting in his head, this guy, Matt Barnes. And Kobe was known for his head game because he was so cool. He was like the best player, one of the like, top three players ever. Just so dominant. And... Um, he was getting in his head. He was known for never losing his cool and getting in his head. And there was this moment where he kind of it came to a boiling point, and this guy, it has, damn, it feels good to be a gangster playing. So, you know, but I'm not going to play the music, obviously, because I. <laughs> but, so, he has a foul. He gets the ball. And he fakes it right at Kobe's face. And Kobe doesn't flinch at all. <laughs> and um, people kept talking about, like, how could you not flinch? How could you not even flinch? <laughs> anyway, beyond being a, ba a great basketball player, he was a role model to a lot of kids. Like, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm going to say this, guys, and... Uh, <laughs> I don't going to say urban kids. <laughs> Ian, give me a call on that. Uh, what? Give me a verdict. Can I say urban kids? We just decided you can't. Oh. In the last segment. We didn't say you couldn't. We said it was, it was racist. I think a lot of people... We didn't decide that, Dan. How dare you? A lot of people looked up to Kobe as a as a role model. The guy was the king of L.A. He was a good guy. He was always supporting charities and uh, 
a good dad. And it's just crazy, man. You know, it was so foggy that day. People, we don't really know what happened yet, but people were just saying it was so foggy you could barely see. It was like milk, the air, when they crashed. But, um, it's kind of, it's just so f ironic how, like, if he wasn't so f rich that he could afford a helicopter, it's like you get so rich and you start doing all this shit, like, flying in your private plane and helicopters. Mm -hmm. I mean, sh theoretically, it's not supposed to f crash, but... It's kind of funny that, like, in a parallel universe where he's not as successful, he survives. Well, that just, I don't know. That could happen any other way. You think it's... a car accident. Um, you think the, uh... I just, I don't like even thinking about that stuff. It's like, yeah, that was his life. He was, he had to travel a lot and he was using... Well, so he was famous for flying his helicopter everywhere and he said that... He was, um, to be able to practice as much as he needed to, to, to be good at basketball and to still have time for his family, he started flying, uh, helicopters. Yeah. I mean, it would turn, it's, it's kind of crazy how convenient it was. It would turn a drive from Calabasas, downtown LA, which would probably take an hour. It's like a five minute mm -hmm. helicopter ride. Well, who knows what happened, but, yeah, that, that news shocked, shocked the city, for sure. We were trying to find Kobe jerseys. It's, like, sold yeah. out everywhere. I was cruising around the street. I saw people, like, with drinks in their hand in a Kobe uniform. Yeah, it was pretty wild. His daughter, though. I just, the whole story is so sad. And even beyond them, that, there's another family that was, like, mom, dad, and a kid. It was right? his daughter's coach and his family. It's crazy. But this so that that story is, is tragic as fuck. Yeah. It's the coach, his wife, and his daughter. Yeah. The whole family got wiped out. And they probably I mean, I don't know if they have kids that survived them, but God, can you imagine? I just can't imagine like oh so tragic to be with I mean, I, I only know because I have a son now, but to yeah. be in that situation where to lose both of them from the wife's perspective and the other sisters. Un unimaginable. And also he was just about to retire. He had retired. Or just retired. He recently retired. Just... But basketball players have l like really long careers after retirement. And he, I think he, he had a lot of, uh, a lot left to give, you know, at that young age of 41. Um... Yeah, it's crazy. But the truth is that, as you said, you know, damn, it's like he was in perfect shape. He had the perfect life. He had it all, but he still died. And his daughter, his poor, that's the part that fucks me up, man. I wish his daughter mm -hmm. wasn't on there. And in all their videos together, they're so cute. He so sweet. Like a great dad. Yeah, she yeah. was a basketball player, and she used to go to all the basketball games with him. So that's where they were traveling together. I read a story that him and his wife had a pack that they would never fly on the helicopter together. Mm. Is that interesting? Turned out to be a good call. Mm. Is that, like, that just seems like they knew it was dangerous. Well, though. my brother, because my brother flew with helicopters, and he said that it's the most dangerous. It's just a death trap, because there's no way... Once something goes wrong, there's no way to escape. It's like a it. rock. You just or, fall out of the air like a rock. Yeah, it doesn't glide no like an airplane. It. Like an airplane, if the engine dies, you can glide. Yeah. The helicopter is just like a bag of dirt falling to the earth. But it sounds to me, from what I have heard this morning, as they get more details, is that it was so foggy that the pilot didn't realize he was as low as he was, mm. and they just crashed into the side of a hill over the uh, Calabasas Hills. They were flying to Thousand Oaks for a basketball game. For his daughter. Where do you land a helicopter in Thousand Oaks? In the parking lot? I'm sure, I'm that, sure, I'm sure there there's a, a spot. Didn't we nearby. see a video where the CEO of like Budweiser took his helicopter all drunk and parked it? <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I do actually. I that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he went, he was, he was drunk helicopter driving. Right? Like I, I can't imagine wow. it's easy to just park a helicopter. 
But, well, that's neither. That's not really the subject of the uh, debate, right, Yellow? 